So welcome to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Andrew Mercer. And, Hello there. Um, Andrew, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and your background with K-12 Online Learning? Yeah, sure thing. Well, I'm in Canada. I'm in Newfoundland, Canada, which is in the far east coast. We're right out in the Atlantic. And um, we've been doing uh, a distance education here because of our, we have so many rural communities around the coastline of our province. We've been doing very heavy distance uh, remote learning for many, many years. I came on uh, to the organization called Center for Distance Learning and Innovation, or CDLI, back in 2002, 2003, something like that. And I've been with them ever since. And my role is I'm a music teacher. So uh, when I came on at the beginning, uh, I helped develop the program to deliver high school music education, accredited music education program over the internet for the government, for, for our provincial governments and through CDLI. So I've been at, I started then and ever since then I've been teaching online. Now back at that time, it was over dial up. And back at that time, Facebook wasn't invented. Uh, YouTube wasn't invented. So we're in, a, we're in a different world. We're in a different world now. So um, I've, I've, I've had the luxury of being able to see the technologies come in all along the way and see how they changed learning, how they changed teaching on an online environment, right from dial up to where we are today. So I have an interesting perspective that way. Thank you. Um, as many of my readers already know, they, uh, I'm originally from Newfoundland and had been involved with the CDLI when it was first uh, getting going. And uh, one of the reasons I specifically reached out to Andrew to be a part of this series was because uh, the CDLI has used a synchronous platform really since its inception. And a lot of the teachers that we have now that are being forced into this remote teaching environment, um, they're choosing things like Horizon Live and Zoom and other synchronous options available to them to deliver their instruction. And the, the CDLI is one of the few programs in North America that has that synchronous component built mm -hmm. into its distance programs. So I think that uh, you've got a, a unique perspective of all of the guests that I've brought on to this segment uh, for that. Um, and I guess thinking in that kind of vein, for those teachers that have now been thrown into this environment, many of them have never taught online before. Some, many of them probably haven't even taken an online class. <laughs> and they're given a couple of weeks to essentially figure out what it is they're going to do. As someone who's been doing this for a while now um any advice or guidance that you'd have for them well it, it's uh it's an interesting question about advice and guidance for for somebody who comes from a, a bricks and mortar uh place to an online environment to teach um the well first of all let me say about the synchronous and asynchronous uh with cdli we use both um and i and i've used both uh all the while i've ever been that i've been teaching online and I have to say that the synchronous is very important when um, uh, it, it's uh, it, there's a lot of in, intangibles that that comes through in a synchronous uh, delivery because it's you're developing rapport and you're putting across your passion for something that for learning that it can be difficult in an asynchronous um, when you're making any kind of learning assets of any sort. Um, in an asynchronous environment, it can be difficult to get across your passion and get across that that rapport building that synchronous actually does. So in saying that, for anybody that's out there that is coming from bricks and mortar, from a, from a typical traditional face-to-face -face learning environment, I would suggest that you try as much as you can to engage in either synchronous or use video at the very least so create a video of yourself saying, good morning, everybody. It's Mrs. Smith, and, and uh, I hope it's a sunny day where you are. Da, 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 da. And, and, and do that because you're, you're using the tools to build rapport. Now, the thing is, we're coming from a, um, us as humans. Uh, we, we have our ways of interacting with people. It may be a bit of a challenge these days, of course, but well, we have our ways of interacting with people that's thousands and thousands of years old. And when we try to we try to um, um, replace that with something foreign where uh, in an asynchronous uh, environment, you, you can easily overlook a lot of these traditional uh, interactions that, we are, that we're involved in. 
So by using things like Zoom or using things like Google Meet or Skype, or you know, you name your you name your platform, um, or uh, by even using YouTube and recording uh, a, an asynchronous video and putting up, you're you're still relying on the age old techniques of of uh, passing on your passion for learning and building rapport and keeping rapport with your students. So one, my big advice would be, don't neglect that. That is a big deal. And and even if you if you do have a uh, a you're comfortable in creating asynchronous materials, use the synchronous at the very least just to say hello and just to get together and and let them let them you know press the flesh as you'd say you know like let them shake your hand but virtually you know let them be there with you because that's so important it's so important for the for your students to know that you're still there and you still care and no better way to do that than face to face. You know, so I, I would say d lean lean hard on these these video tools, these synchronous and asynchronous video tools. Okay. Similarly, we've got a lot of parents now that have their kids at home, and they've got to find a way to make uh, a conducive environment for them to to learn, um, and at the same time deal with everything else that's going on uh, with this situation. Um, is there any advice that you would have for them? Um, well, you know, like it's, there's, there's a million there. Every situation is unique. Every household is unique in, in what they need to satisfy the learning needs of the, of the students. So uh, one thing I would say to parents is to, um, do some research, you know, like your blog, for example, um, go to, a, go to, a, uh, go to the internet and do some research and find out the, the local the locations of the material that you can use. Like, like just an example, um, there's there are many great tutorials on YouTube on how to do everything. Okay, and I mean we know there's thousands, and some some of them are great, and some of them are not so great. Um, but if you can find some great uh, repositories of information where people have uh, culled through the uh, all these lessons and all these tutorials, and they've 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 qualified these lessons and tutorials and and resources. Um, you can start there. Start by picking through that, um, but it's going to involve some research. And you're not going to find a. I'm going to I'm going to back up a little bit. You're you're you really want to address the unique needs of your child. So every child has their has their uh, their strengths, their weaknesses. You know the things that they're real passionate about. Uh, things that they need extra help on. Everybody is the same. Everybody is the same. They all have needs, but everybody is unique. So first keep that in your mind. And then as a parent, go out and do some research so you can tailor um, the resources you find uh, for your child's needs. And thing, after you do a little research, at the beginning, it'll be like you're standing on, on a precipice and you it, there's so, so much out there you won't know. And it can be daunting. I feel for you. But in a little while, after a little research, you'll start to find some footholds. You'll start to find some place, some things that are going to some anchor points that will help you move through this and find the things that are best suited for your child. And in fact, I would not be surprised if after um, a little bit of, um, you know, a cup of coffee and, and a, an hour of research, you'll probably be saying this that I found. I need to use this all the time with my child. And this is great. I didn't know about this. And now, so my guess is that in the long term, your child's education will be improved vastly through your, your research of the, of the resources that are out there. So look for, but first thing, look for um, well-respected blogs and, and, uh, and repositories of, of resources where, where educators and researchers are, have, have picked through some of this material and they can qualify it first for you. And then you can start to handpick it for your child's unique needs. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning today with Andrew Mercer from the Thank Center you. of Distance Learning and Innovation in Newfoundland, Canada. Thank uh you. -huh.